Good afternoon, all. Camelbacktrading.org coming to you this Tuesday afternoon, March 26th. We're looking at Window Traders market profile of the ESNQ. This is a beautiful example, perfect example of what the Three Stooges can do to you, especially Larry and Mo. Okay, Curly did nothing today, although he did give a head fake and gave us an afternoon rally high in K in ES. NQ's afternoon rally high was in F, but Larry and Mo took a day that was on the verge of maybe being our smallest range of the year. Almost, actually, it would have been smaller than last year's smallest range, I think, at that time, with no volume or anything to absolutely exploding to the downside and getting tempo and volume. Hope everybody stayed safe. I actually made money on a long in NQ and l and We'll go over that in a minute, but I quickly, quickly put those to rest. And I'll tell you why I took those longs and everything in a moment. ES and SPY and with an outside day down. We took out yesterday's high, yesterday's low, and closed below it. NQ, well, let's go to Righty first. Righty goes out with an outside day down, like ES. A double distribution day, which they had from B period. And a 10 wide point of control, and they're in a four-day balance. Okay. They slightly took out Friday's low. So today's low is the balance. NQ goes out in an afternoon rally high in F, an 11 wide point of control, a double distribution day down, a price spike and a price probe, right? Spike below H is low, and then I like to say the market probed when we take out L's low in the last time frame. ES goes out with an afternoon rally high in K, 10 wide, double distribution down, price spike, price probe, Outside day down. Meanwhile, they had overlap and a higher value. Short-term traders. Now, I'm still calling. Because we took out yesterday's high in ES, which put the daily back to balance, I'm not calling it down again right away. So I am still calling this. You could call it either a two-day balance or still a four-day balance. But for me to say the daily is down again, well, it shouldn't be that hard for the sellers to take out today's low and put it back to down. That's how I'm looking at it. Although it was incredibly hard just to get the uh, overnight low. I can tell you that much. But once they got the overnight lows, they went haywire. Um, <clears throat> as far as my trading, NQ has some decent tempo, it looked like, to the upside. So at the 945 turnover, I took a long against that and it worked. Then I started some ebb and flow longs in B period in NQ because it started one time framing up. Did okay on a couple of those, but I did get caught on one when she came in. Took it off. Still made money overall in B, but gave back some. Then in C period, right before the turnover, the way they had come down and closed, it looked like the tempo was good. I jumped on the short to get the IB low, and that worked in NQ. I then shorted ES when it pumped up in C period to the, over, uh, uh, to the uh, opening and this 144 simple moving average, and that paid me a couple of points. That was the only trade I took in ES. ES was, ES was just garbage until late. D period. <clears throat> I shorted NQ uh, against the opening and the 144. It worked. Then once it got above the opening, that game was over. I took a short <clears throat> when it looked like we were going to finally make a new low on the day. And I thought we'd go get the um, overnight. Now we didn't, but I still got paid. And I took it off when we made the new low, not waiting for the overnight low. Now, l and <clears throat> I thought the main purpose would be to go get the overnight low in NQ and possibly the single prints from the other day. Remember, they were trend day up yesterday. So when they got the overnight low and got to the single prints, I took a long the first time. I got paid in L. I got paid. Then M started, I'm like, well, I know we have a trend day down now, but I'm thinking we'll probe just to fill the single prints. I thought it would be a probe, fill the singles, go back up and take back today's singles. Well, it got the singles. I uh, got long. It did go against me initially, but it did push up where it gave me time to get out and make money. And then that was it. I'm like, well, if they don't go back, right, once you fill those singles, you want a quick need reaction off of those to go back up. Well, I got a little one to get paid. 
but it never went up off of that to fill the single prints and get back into the meat of the profile from today. So once that came back down, I'm like, forget it, game over. And I even told the people in the room in ES, I'm like, I would be, I wasn't looking for them to take out yesterday's low. But if they did, be careful. Because that was another thing. I thought we would not hold these trend, these singles. I thought we would get the overnight, maybe probe quickly, come back in and take back the trend day from today. Never happened. So they got very, very aggressive, obviously, in M period. Um, but again, I stayed out of it after those initial longs because you can tell something had changed. Um, now, certainly I could have jumped on shorts. I didn't. Uh, and again, I don't, I don't trade L&M a lot, but I thought those were decent visual trades with the value higher and with the wide point of controls that we would go back and do what I just mentioned. We didn't, but I, at least I was still fortunate enough to get out and make money on them. As far as destinations go in SPY, we have a lot of upside ones now. First, we have the price probe, which is L's low at 519.96. Then you have the single print, 520, 26 to 49, eyes low, which is the price spike. Nine wide at 520.91, K's high. Five, uh, not K's high, that was the POC. Uh, 521.05 is K's high, the afternoon rally high, and 521.58, the daily high. Now, ES has a wider POC. SPY only had nine. For the downside in SPY, you have 518.40, today's low. Now, ES, on the upside... Well, let's do the downside. There's only one. Today's low, 63. Upside, price probe, 78. Single prints, 81 and a quarter to 83. 10 wide pock, 87 and a quarter. Afternoon rally high, 89. And today's high of 94.50. Now let's go to the charts. So again, weekly is very healthy, okay? The weekly is very healthy. I'm sorry. The monthly first. One time frame in a five months. I guarantee you there'll be people all over social media screaming the end is here now. We had a reversal. Let's take baby steps. Monthly, very healthy. Weekly, very healthy. This is week 12 of one time framing up in the uh, SPY. Okay? We're nowhere near the lows yet. Last week's low is $8 away. So the weekly is one time framing up still and healthy. The daily, now some people, you want to call down, be my guest. I think you've got to call at least a two-day balance, if not a four-day. I'm calling it a four. They're going to have to prove to me to take out the all-time high to come out of balance on, on the daily to the upside. However, if we take out today's low tomorrow, we're automatically down on the daily then. Then that balance will change if we, at, when we finally take out a, a high. The real important levels for tomorrow will be the price spike from Wednesday. In fact, let's go back to those. Will be the price spike from the Fed day. We close at 63. The price spike's 47.75. So a week later, we're going to see if the market's going to test this level that it broke out from to the upside. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because if we do get below it and we start losing it and bears start uh, getting acceptance below it, then the weekly be could become a factor and finally come into balance at some point. <clears throat> now, I still think that would be healthy. You just can't keep going up, right? Twenty. This is week 21. So 21 out of 22 weeks, SPY is up. ES is what? 19 out of 22. So the same with NQ. Now remember, NQ only took back yesterday's singles. They did not take back Fed Day singles. They're small, but they're there. Then they have their price spike at 334.50. So my line in the sand going into tomorrow. <coughs> I'll give you two lines in the sand for each side. For the bulls, starting tomorrow, it's the price spike, 47.75 in ES. And 34, what did I say? 34.50 in NQ. For the Bears, they want to defend the price spike, which is I's low in ES, H is low in NQ. So that's 83 for the Bears in ES 
And man, these things are in such big increments. 59 and change, 59, 529.50 in NQ. Now, I know those are wide parameters, but you never know if you're going to gap low tomorrow against that price spike. You never know if we take a lot of this back and open near the price spike tomorrow. But regardless, use those as major, major places that each side wants to defend. Plain and simple. Okay, if the bulls can't defend the price spikes, some more downside is in store. If the bears can't defend the price spike, nothing changed. You're in balance and you might start going back up and start attacking the white pox from yesterday. I hope you had a good day trading. Thank you for liking and subscribing to this uh, channel. Enjoy your evening and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.